Hey everyone, good morning. It's another day up here on Mockingbird Hill and today I am finally getting uh, the new ferns in place. Uh, this is one of my favorite chores to do each spring um, because they just end up looking so nice up on the porch. Uh, but last year I found uh, a new way to me of um, using burlap instead of cocoa core for um, my liners in my hanging baskets because I have uh, the large, I think they're like 22 inch hanging baskets. They're quite large, but the cocoa liners for them are very expensive. And so last year I tried uh, rolls of burlap and uh, doubled it up and it worked very well. So let me turn the camera around, show you how it worked from last year. This is uh, April, mid-April, um, and these held up pretty well. Some of them um, rotted out over the winter, but they all uh, worked very well throughout the whole season. So I'm excited to do this again. It saves a lot of money. Um, I will link uh, the supplies I got from Amazon down in the description. Um, in my little Amazon storefront. I do get a small commission if you order it from there, uh, but it does not change the price for you. So um, if you're interested in doing it this way for your hanging baskets, uh, use that link, that would be great. Um, this worked out very well for me and was very classy. So let me turn the camera around and show you what it looked like at the uh, end of this, up uh, <laughs> right now. Um, and this is again from last year. And then I will show you uh, kind of my process and the final product. So, okay. So this is it again. It's mid April. This is from last spring, same time around Easter is when I got the ferns. They did so well in these, they ended up being huge. Um, and I'm just very pleased. So this is two layers of burlap and I will show you the rolls once we go inside the garage and get it done. Um, you can see here, you know, uh, towards the end of the season, you do get some root growth outside of it, but the, the sack is still intact. Burlap, well, material, it's not, it wasn't a sack. Um, but uh, it's very easy and much more affordable than just buying the cocoa liners. All right, so here is what is left over from my burlap roll from last season. I do have another box for this. if. For some reason, I don't have enough. I do have about two boxes. It doesn't hurt to keep it on hand. Um, and so what I'm going to do, what I did last year was to double it up um, and uh, then zip tie it to the side of the, of the basket. And so what I'm going to do first is to go ahead and put it here. These are 24-inch planters, by the way. I remember that now. Uh, I like to put it down. And then kind of work with it to measure out what we need. And again, it's not going to be as smooth as a cocoa core planter, um, but it is inexpensive and it's effective. So I'm pretty happy with it. So basically, you're just going to take uh, your burlap and kind of measure it to the size of the planter that you want. Then I'm going to take it, flip it in half from where that edge was. And cut out a section. This does not have to be an exact science, but it's helpful to have a kind of a rough idea of what you want. You can always trim off um, pieces that are kind of hanging over the edge that you want to. All right. with it a little bit 
And then what I did last year is I just started going around the edges um, of the basket, folding them over kind of like this, taking a zip tie, which I just got those from Walmart. You can find them basically anywhere. Take it under the first rim of, take it under the rim of your planter and then just put it together. Um, last year, I should have done more zip ties. Um, so the little bit of the material kind of fell forward um, and spilled out some of the dirt. So I'm gonna be using more zip ties this year. You don't have to worry about the zip ties showing. I mean, I suppose you could get some to kind of match. I know they have brown zip ties. Um, but in my experience, the ferns grow over them or, you know, kind of drape over the sides so quickly that nobody sees the zip ties anyway. Might have to play with your material some to make sure you get it all the way to the bottom kind of you know as flat as you can but of course your soil will help push it down some too so. it out a little bit and uh, it'll do a good job. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut off the tails of the zip ties and then I will trim my burlap fabric all the way around. And then this one will be ready to go. Uh, I will go ahead and do all of them, all the planters first. There are six of them and then we'll go ahead and get them planted up. Actually, I do remember what I did last year. Is I went ahead and planted them and then kind of folded the burlap back over the soil as kind of a mulch layer. That's exactly what I did. And it kind of uh, dressed it up a little bit. So that's right. That is what I will do is we'll go ahead and get these done, plant them, and then we'll tuck the burlap in underneath the fern. And it's warm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead with this one and uh, we'll get these finished and I'll bring you back for uh, planting the ferns. Okay, so now that we have finished that, um, I'm going to go ahead and do one more step that I like to do. I find that it helps to uh, kind of retain a little bit of moisture in the bottom of the planters. Uh, and that is to take a Walmart sack, just kind of spread it out a little bit and put about four holes in it. And you can do as much as you want, but basically 
you know, having, having the holes in it allows uh, water to still drain out, but also holds in some of the moisture. Now I do water my ferns um, every day. They're set up on a timer. Um, I can show that set up later. Um, but this is essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm putting a Walmart sack on the bottom of the planter and then I am going to put a little bit of this miracle Grow potting mix into the bottom to cover that uh, Walmart sack. And then, and then I'll go ahead and set one of these ferns. Sorry about that. That's sweetie. I'll set one of these ferns in the bottom and I'm going to keep it in its uh, netting to prevent the fern from going everywhere and then we'll make a uh, kind of like an indentation with it to get the right size and then we'll go ahead and add uh, soil around it. So that is the plan. All right, so here you can see that I have added in some soil, tamping it down. I'm gonna take this one, kind of make sure it's where I want. All right, it looks pretty good. My plan, if it works, <laughs> is to fill the soil around it and then take it out and unwrap the other fern and go ahead and set it down in. So hopefully that'll work. Should make things a little bit easier. I'm making a mess here on my porch, but that's okay. Should make things a little bit easier for this year. We get all six of them planted I'll go ahead and water them in and hang them up And that is that. Oh, I love it. Okay, now we've just got to get our chains out from under. And this one is ready to go. Right, but uh, I'm happy with it. It looks great. I'll go ahead and get this one hung and then once we get uh, all six of them done, we'll get them watered in and I'll show you the final uh, details. One other thing I forgot to say earlier is to use a garden staple 
to pin down this fabric. It helps it just stay put a little bit better. Keeps it looking nice and tidy. You don't have to do it all the way around because like I said earlier, the plant will hold down most of it. But um, if, you, if you want to, in the beginning, it does help. Keep going. All right, so they're all in. I just need to uh, water them in and this project is finished. That won't take me long, but I think they look fantastic. I feel like there's nothing more elegant than a kind of like a cocoa core look. So I am very happy with it.